Hey, good morning everyone. It is a rainy day here in Jackson, so I'm taking a little bit of time to uh, to get my fix kit together for, for Trans-Iowa next weekend. Um, I talked a little bit about, um, you know, some of the supplies, um, you know, for repair that I would take with me at our talk the other night at Lewis and Allison's, um, but as you know, as I've been thinking through Trans-Iowa, you know, compared to some of the other races that I've done, um, I've, I've sort of kind of like, you know, leaned my kit out uh, based on the challenges that, um, that we might run into up in, um, up in Iowa. So I'll kind of break it down and kind of go through the different parts and pieces. Um, one thing that I emphasized a lot the other night at our, at our talk was whatever you put in your fixed kit, you should, you should definitely know how to use. So everything, all, just about everything in this kit, um, I have either used at one point or another, or um, I, I had uh, not had and wished I had, so it sort of, it sort of got added in. Um, so this, this is really just like an evolution of what I take on these big self-supported rides um, over the past couple of years. Um, so first thing, um, is tubes. Um, so I'm going to carry, even though I'm running a tubeless setup um, with Terravel Cannonball um, tires, I'm still going to take a couple of tubes with me. Um, I've run into situations to where you've cut a sidewall, um, you've had to, you know, sew it or boot it, and you're not going to get it, you know, sealed back up tubeless. So it is very, very important to have tubes. Um, the other, the other thing that I've learned is that you need to know the conditions of your tubes. Um, so anytime I do, you know, a big race, I'll kind of look at the stock of tubes that I have. And um, if I have some older tubes that I think are still in pretty good condition, I'll still, you know, unravel them, put some air in them, um, you know, kind of sink them in a, in a, in a tub of water or a bathtub or something like that, just to make sure there are no holes before, um, you know, taking all the air out of them and, and wrapping them back up. Um, the other the other thing that I've that I've learned on you know these off road races is with all of the vibrations of um, you know of, of riding off road and you know different parts and pieces being next to one another it's really easy for a tube to get a, a friction hole um, worn into it so one thing that I always do with tubes is I'll um, I'll wrap them in electrical tape. Um, and then I'll also throw them in um, in, a, in a plastic bag just to help offset some of those um, some of those friction holes. The other uh, just one little thing I'll do is I'll either put um, a date or the event that I use the tube for. So this says TI14 because it's for Trans Iowa 14, um, so that I know you know, down the road after this race, I'm kind of getting supplies together. I can pull this tube out and say, oh, I, I use this for Trans-Iowa. I knew that that was only a couple of months ago. So I sort of know what shape it's in um, rather than coming across some old tube and not really knowing the, uh, knowing the history of it. So if everything works out perfectly uh, next weekend, I will not use these tubes. I won't even, you know, I won't, I won't take them out um, and they should be good to go for uh, for DK and for uh, Gravel Worlds up in Lincoln. Um, the other, the other thing that um, that is super important on long routes like this is having some way to keep your um, keep your chain lubed. Um, I am a big fan of Pro Gold Extreme Lube. Unfortunately, Pro Gold only comes in like four ounce bottles. Um, or these little sample packets, which isn't really conducive to taking along with you. Um, so what I, what I do is I've taken an old Visine bottle, obviously taken, you know, taken the eye drop stuff out of it and then filled it up with, um, with Pro Gold. And it has a nice little you know, dropper applicator that makes it you know, really easy to, to reapply to your chain. And the seal on it is, is, you know, is, is actually really, really good. So there's not a lot of leakage. And I'll take that and I'll just kind of like roll it up in a, in a microfiber towel so I can apply it, wipe off the excess and, and, and get on my way. Um, that worked really well in Arizona last year. Um, I don't, I think it's a half, uh, a half ounce or maybe, a, maybe even a quarter ounce bottle. And I, I didn't, I didn't use all of it. 
Um, getting into some of the other little parts and pieces, um, tire levers obviously are really, really important to go along with, you know, with, um, with changing tires. Um, tubeless tires in particular, they can be set like really, really tight against the bead. Um, so, so having a good set of levers that you're, um, that you're comfortable with, you know, using is, is really important. Um, the other little sort of trick piece that I picked up, um, this year is this little pair of master link pliers that wolf tooth makes um the, the the cool thing about this little you know this little set of pliers is number one it allows you to you know take apart a master link um on um on a chain really easily it also has a little wrench built into it um, if anyone has ever had to swap in a set a, a, a tube into um, into a tubeless setup Man, the, the tubeless valve, that little retaining nut on there, it could have been on there for a year, two years, however long, and it can be a pain to get off sometimes. Um, so there's a little you know, wrench built into the, into the jaws of this, um, of this tool that you know, lets you get on there and, and twist that nut off. Um, the other really cool part about this tool is the, um, the pivot bolt is actually a chain ring bolt. So in the event that you, you know, you shear off a chain ring bolt or something like that, you can just use your multi-tool to take that out and then throw it on your chain ring. Um, down at the bottom here, you see there is this little, um, this little star type of a, um, type of a cutout. Um, that is made to be able to take the valve stem um, off, of a, off of a valve. Um, at the very end, there is a little curve thing here. So that looks a lot like a tire, tire lever, right? Um, personally, I wouldn't use this against a carbon rim unless I was in like a dire situation, but it does give you an extra lever to use in the event that you need it. And then the really cool part about this tool is they, you know, they machined out the inside of it to hold two quick links. Um, so I got two 11 speed quick links in there. Um, they're, they're magnetically secured in there, so you're not going to lose them. Um, that's one of those teeny tiny little small parts that you carry in your fixed kit that um, you don't want to lose um, in, the, in the event that you need it. So it's nice to have a couple of quick links in there as well, and it's a super light little package. Uh, a multi-tool, um, I've always been a big fan of carrying a Crank Brothers um, M17. It has all of the hex keys that I need, as well as... Um, as well as a chain break, and I've used this chain break a number of times, uh, and it works. It works super, super well. Um, the other thing that it has built into the chain break is it has a tiny little spoke wrench, which I've also used before. Um, so this is hands down like the my my favorite um, multi tool uh, on the bike. So really, really good tool there. Um, this little nasty little baggie of bolts. It's just a bunch of random, you know, not random, um, but a bunch of bolts for, um, you know, small parts on the bike, uh, bottle cage bolts, cleat bolts. I think I have a chain ring bolt in there. Um, I think uh, an extra cleat, just lots of little small parts that you might need um, when you are out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, an extra section of 11 speed chain, in case you do have a chain break. Um, and you have to, you know, take off a couple of links um, to, to take out a bad spot of chain. It's really nice to be able to fill that spot in with a good piece of chain and a couple of quick links, so that you don't, um, so that you don't limit your uh, limit your gears. Um, so if you, you know, if you if you bent a couple of you know plates um, somehow on your chain. Uh, by picking up a rock or whatever, and you have to take out two or three links, that might prevent you from getting into um, like easier gears. Um, so it'd be really, really nice to be able to just, you know, to, to put a piece of chain in there to replace that, that bent or broken so that, you, uh, so that you don't lose any gears. Uh, zip ties, always super important, million different uses. Um, a, spare pet, a spare set of brake pads, I would highly recommend that, especially in these dirty, nasty, gritty um, type of, um, of races. Um, it is when you get into muddy, mucky, sandy, silty uh, conditions, it's pretty amazing how fast um, a set of pads can get, um, can get eaten up. 
um, really, really fast. Uh, spare derailleur hanger, another thing that never leave home without it. Um, you know, if if you you know if you rip off your derailleur hanger, it'd be so much better to carry around this twenty dollar, you know, twenty gram uh, little little piece of metal uh, to swap it off. Um, patch kits. So even though we got spare tubes and all of this good stuff, um, I mean patch kits are are another really really simple thing to keep in your kit just in case um, you throw a tube in and you get a pinch flat or you pick up a thorn or, or something like that. Um, so I carry like a standard set of like glue on patch kits um, as well as glueless uh, patches. Um, and then the other thing along the lines of tire maintenance, if you're kind of picking up on a theme here, tires are really, really important in these types of races. Um, so a tire boot, um, this is a park boot. A lot of people, you know, will not carry something like this and they'll just use, you know, a, a goo wrapper or, or whatnot, but it's just another, you know, another thing that I've had in my fixed kit for a really long time and I keep there. And then this, uh, last but not least, is a, um, it looks like it's a couple of Pokemon cards, which it is, um, but inside this little packet is a, um, is a needle and thread. So like a, a curved upholstery needle with some nylon cord attached to it um, in the, and the horrible event that, um, that I might need to sew up a, a tire that had a, a really bad cut in it, which I've had to do on a couple of occasions. Um, the other night I talked about my 2015 Kanza uh, experience and how I cut a tire about 35 miles in, had to sew it up and then nurse that tire to the first aid town for, for another 35 miles um, uh, to, to get it fixed. Um, the only other thing here that is, you know, sort of like part of my fixed kit um, that I don't have in front of me is a good pump. Um, we talked about the importance of a good pump last night um, as well. A pump never runs out of air. You know, a lot of people um, for shorter cross country races or whatnot, they're pretty, they're pretty comfortable with like these, you know, like with CO2 systems, but you carry two or three CO2s with you and you burn through those and you don't have a pump like you were out of air. Um, and being that these are self-supported races, technically you couldn't take assistance from another rider that had, you know, a CO2 or, you know, or a, or a pump. Um, so I carry a Bontrager air support HV. So it's a high volume pump, not a high pressure pump. Um, I bought it at Kansas in 2015 and I carry that thing with me everywhere. And it's gotten me out of a lot of, um, a lot of bad situations, um, really, really easy to use. The two things that I also keep on that pump is I keep maybe, uh, maybe you know, four or five feet of duct tape wrapped around the handle, and then also some electrical tape wrapped around the wrapped around the handle. So it looks it looks a little funny wrapped up with tape, but it um, I, I've used the tape uh, on that pump a number of times. Um, so that's basically all that I'm going to take with me um, in my fixed kit. One other thing that's not really fix related that I'm going to stash in there as well is a um, a Mylar bivy or emergency blanket. I may, depending upon the temperatures next week up in Iowa, I may take it out. But right now the forecasts have it down into um, down into the the 30s. Um, so just in the event of something you know something um, not optimal happening, um, it'd be nice to be able to stay warm on the side of the road. Um, and then all of this goes into this tiny little, um, you know, dry bag has a roll top and then it's, it stuffs into the, um, sort of the harness on the, on, on the seat pack, um, on my, on my bike. So that's it. That's basically all I'm taking with me from a, uh, from a fix or repair perspective. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys take with you or some, what some of your favorite, uh, favorite tools or parts and pieces um, are that you have learned over the years. So um, stay tuned. Probably um, in the next couple of days, as I you know kind of finish getting my bike dialed out um, and <laughs> deciding what clothes I'm going to take with me to Iowa, I'll probably do a couple of other couple of other quick videos. Um, so cheers! Uh, and this is a this is a nice little cup uh, from Dirty Cans that my wife got a few years ago. Um, so it's good, good inspiration on a, on a Sunday morning. And then Brendan Collier. 
still repping the hat. I'm gonna need a uh, I'm gonna need a cowbell hat here pretty soon, buddy. So you guys have a good weekend. Take care.